a ramp is an inclined plane joining two surfaces in a building which are at different levels. A person may go up or come down walking using this between the two surfaces at different levels. A staircase or series of steps do the same thing, but they are a combination of small flat surfaces rising at a constant interval, that is the rise. It may not be convenient to roll something up or down, for example a wheelchair on a series of steps. Thus, ramps are important. Let us see a ramp in 3D to understand two of its important dimensions. This is a ramp in 3D. The two important dimensions in the ramp are the total horizontal distance it travels and the total rise it achieves in that horizontal distance. The horizontal distance travelled is called the run. And the vertical distance achieved is called the rise. Let us now understand how do we mention the slope of a ramp in drawings. This is important since different slopes are used for different purposes. Slopes of vehicle may differ from slopes for pedestrians. The slope is not depicted as an angle from the horizontal. It is mentioned as a relation between rise and the run. But before that, let us understand one more aspect. This is the total run of the ramp. This is also called going. And this is the rise of the ramp. We denote rise as R and we denote run as G. This is the total run or going of the ramp and this is the rise. The steps have the same rise but the run is smaller. So for the same rise, the run of the ramp is more and the run of the steps is less. So a ramp will take more space on floor in comparison to steps or staircase for the same rise. We can say that a ramp has a slope of 1 in 10. This could be 1 in 8 or 1 in 12 or 1 in any number. For our case, we are taking it as 1 in 10. This means that for a rise of 1 unit, the ramp has a run of 10 units. And we say that the ramp has a slope of 1 in 10. We also denote slope as percentage. This can be calculated as R upon G or rise upon going into 100. In this case, it is 1 upon 10 into 100 or a slope of 10%. Ramps can be of different shapes depending on situation and rise. A single ramp may take you up to the desired rise. If the rise is more, it should be divided into two or more parts with mid landing. A mid landing is like a relief space which allows a person to relax or regain balance in case of any fall. This is a straight ramp with a mid landing. Building codes of a region may specify the placement and size of mid landing. 
The arrow in this case denotes the direction of rising of the ramp and is thus marked as up. This is the mid landing of the ramp. A mid landing is a flat surface which connects two ramps. A ramp may turn around after the mid landing like in a dog leg staircase, which means it turns 180 degree after the landing back into the direction from where it started. It may be used in places where we have width but not the length to place the ramp. The mid landing is longer in this case since it has to connect the two ramps. Mind you, the width that is the shorter dimension in this case is always equal to the width of the ramp. A ramp may take 90 degree turn after the mid landing. It may do this more than once so as to reach the desired floor. This is a quarter turn ramp. One may also design a ramp that takes an acute or obtuse angle turn. This is possible. The only thing to be kept in mind is that this should have a proper mid landing which allows everybody to comfortably rise to the connecting ramp after the mid landing. The edges of the mid landing from where the ramp rises should be at 90 degree to the direction of the rise. The edge of the mid landing cannot be at the line of meeting of the ramps. It has to be away from this line and at 90 degree to the direction of the rise. Let us understand why this should be done. This is a ramp which is turning at say 135 degree. This is the line where the two ramps meet. The next ramp rises up around this dotted line. The two longer edges of the first ramp rise up at the same angle till they reach this edge. The longer edges of the ramp may be divided into two lengths. A is the length till which both the edges rise simultaneously. But the smaller edge is the dimension where only one edge is rising. But for this smaller length B, this edge rises up more than the other edge. And this line of meeting of the two ramps because of B will not be horizontal but inclined to the horizontal like this. So till B, these lines between the two edges rise together but after B, this does not happen and we get an inclined meeting line which may not be so comfortable. So the edge of the mid landing should start away from this meeting line. Somewhere within A only. The other edge is also taken similarly. And this becomes the mid landing which is flat and comfortable for all. Thus it is important to understand where and how to place mid landing in a ramp. While depicting ramp or staircase in a plan, dotted lines are used to show that part of the ramp or staircase which is above the section plane and continuation lines are used to show this change or transition. Building codes and local bylaws also prescribe essentials for ramp design. Always refer to these before designing a ramp for a facility.
Thank you for watching and hope this was useful.